You probably already know that I'm obsessed with tech and gadgets, but also I'm a software developer. So when there is an opportunity to make a video about both, I never miss it. So Apple claims the iPad to be our next computer, and many developers wish to code on an iPad. Just imagine, while in the meetings you make notes with the Apple Pencil or you show a smartsheet directly from your iPad, and then you come back to your desk and you continue development on the same device right away. Or if you're a student and you cannot afford both an iPad and a computer and you have to decide and the iPad might look cooler, so maybe that's the way to go. Well, unfortunately, we're not there yet and it's not a full laptop replacement. For example, I cannot do Android apps on an iPad, but maybe it can work for your needs. Many developers use VS Code as their coding environment and some of you asked me in the comments to the previous videos about how can you run it on an iPad. So today I'll show you three ways of how you can use VS Code on an iPad from easy and limited to advanced and unlimited. It's Alex here, welcome to the Geek's Table and let's start with the first one. If you want a fully native experience, then I suggest you to download the Code app. I already have it. They are in a transition to a subscription model, so they say that the main functionality will be free but if you want something additional, you'll have to subscribe. For me, it's still a one-time purchase and it was like seven US dollars. So it's up to you. You can wait a little bit or you can hurry up and have a one-time purchase. And if we open it, we'll see that they have definitely been inspired by the Visual Studio Code because the UI is completely the same or almost the same. If we go to the settings and scroll down a little bit, we'll see that there are quite a lot of languages supported. Some of them are supported locally, some of them supported remotely, so you can even debug your application, but for the remote languages, you will need an internet connection. I have a folder with a simple web page project, so let me open it. And here I can definitely browse through my code. And there is even a run button here, so let's run it and we'll see the result right away. So yeah, let's come back. And if I go back to their welcome page, there is a link to their GitHub and I really encourage you to go there because they have frequently asked questions and they will definitely help you to understand if this app meets your needs or not because it's still not the full replica of Visual Studio Code. The link will be in the description. If we want the real VS Code experience, then we'll have to use another app. It's called Serve Editor. Mind the spelling or you can use the link in the description. So the idea is that we have a VS Code server running somewhere, it could be a cloud, NAS, or even your local laptop, and we connect there through the serve editor and we basically get the same functionality as if we were on a local machine. The app itself is free if we use it with our own instance of the VS Code server, or the app can set up its own VS Code server instance for us but it requires a subscription with a seven day trial period. So let me restore the purchase because it's a fresh install of the sub editor on the iPad and we'll have to wait maybe one or two minutes while it connects to my Visual Studio Code server somewhere in the cloud. And now we have a full version of Visual Studio Code running on my iPad or through my iPad somewhere in the cloud and I can use it the same way as if I were using it on my laptop. This is a good way to go if we don't want to spend a lot of time for setting it up, like take my money and give me a place to code. But of course, we're here to take the harder part because we want to save money and we're engineers. So we'll set up our own VS Code server and we will link it to our iPad through the serve editor. But first, let me tell you real quick about this keyword that I've been featuring for the half of the video, because Inatech sent it to me, they didn't sponsor this video, they just gave me this keyword to test, and I really like it, and I want to share my experience with you. This particular keyword is designed for the latest iPad Airs and 11-inch iPad Pros. It has an internal battery, which charges over the USB-C, and it uses Bluetooth to connect to your device. And thank goodness it has Bluetooth instead of the smart connector, because I used the keyboard with a smart connector and I even did a bunch of videos about it, but then I sold my iPad and I couldn't use it with any other device. This one can be paired even with my MacBook. Oh, and if you're a fan of an iPad mini, I am, then you'll appreciate this. 
I take an iPad mini with a case and place it over here. And I have a fully sized keyboard with control buttons and a trackpad paired to my iPad of choice. And when I want it, I can just take it away and go. Also, it's worth mentioning that the trackpad supports smooth scrolling and gestures, so you'll get the native feel of the iPad OS. Especially if you're into video editing, you'll appreciate the LumaFusion. And if you prefer to code at night, then the keyboard is backlit, and you can even choose one of the seven colors depending on your mood. Also, as a coder, I do appreciate it has two delete buttons, or delete and backspace in Windows terms, to quickly remove symbol from both sides of the cursor. If you're interested, you can use a link in the description. It's not affiliated, so I won't get any reward. Just wanted to share my experience with you. But now, let's go back to the code. So, we need a code server running somewhere. Let's install it in a Docker container on our local machine and connect it from the iPad. So, let's switch to the desktop for a moment. If we don't have Docker installed, let's go to docker.com and select the required version of Docker Desktop. I need one for the Apple chip. Once it's downloaded, let's install it. The process is pretty straightforward, you just copy the file and that's it. So now let's launch it, reading carefully the terms and accepting them. And now we need to wait just a little bit for the Docker Desktop to start. So now we have it installed and just for you, if you don't know what a Docker is, treat it as a pocket universe. So you need an instance of Visual Studio Code, you put it into this pocket universe and you can access it whenever you want. And if you don't need it, you just shut it down. If you need it, you load it. So it's kind of like a simple virtual machine. So if we check here, we will see that there are images. You may treat images like an installation file. So you download it from somewhere and then you extract it into a container. You can see that there are containers here. So we need an image of the Visual Studio Code. So let's open this Open VS Code Server library, which is free, so we can use it without any subscription. And let's search for the Docker. So here it is. And we need to copy this command to download the source to our local machine. Now let's switch the terminal and paste this command there. What it will do, it will pull this image to our local machine with these parameters that we've set here. And also it will deploy it to our Docker container. So let's start. At first it tries to find it locally, couldn't find it. So now it's downloading from the server. Okay, the source of the Visual Studio Code server was pulled and extracted in a container in the Docker. And the UI is available here. So let's open Safari and open localhost with the port 3000. And here we have our own Visual Studio Code running in a Docker container on our laptop. But now we want to have the same experience on our iPad. So let's switch to the serve editor and here we have to, we have something running, so we have to switch to the self-hosted server. And here it asks us to type in the code server URL, so we need a URL of the machine. It's pretty easy to define, we just check the network preferences, and here we'll see our IP address. We need to type it on our iPad. And of course, we need to add a semicolon and then the port 3000. Okay, let's click save. And now we see it's loading, so it switches the serve editor from the pre-hosted Visual Studio Code to the one that we're running on our local machine. And once again, we have a fully working Visual Studio Code on an iPad or technically on our laptop, but the iPad has fully access to it. And now it's even for free, so we didn't have to pay for a subscription. Well, it was relatively simple and fast, but of course, once your laptop is off or changes the IP address, then the iPad will lose its connection to the Visual Studio Code server. So the best thing is to deploy the server on a cloud virtual machine. If we switch back to the GitHub of this library, they have quite nice guides how to install the Visual Studio Code server to Amazon, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, and so on. 
so I do encourage you to check out those instructions. Now I shall show you what I personally use. I have a home cloud from Synology that can run Docker containers and can be accessible over the internet. So if you have a Synology NAS too, you might benefit from this instruction. So let's try installing the Visual Studio Code server to a Synology NAS. Okay, now we are in a Synology console. So let's go to the package center and install Docker. So let's search for the Docker. For me, it's already installed and running. So once you install it, Let's go to the file station and check if the Docker folder is here or not. If it's not, then you might want to create it. And within the Docker folder, let's create another one, which will be code server. So now all we need is to launch this code to make the Docker on our Synology NAS to get our version of code server with these parameters. But as you can see, there are some bits of information missing, so let's fill them out. So let's switch back to the Synology NAS, go to the control panel, open the terminal and SNMP, and now we shall enable the SSH service. Click apply, okay. Okay, let's switch to the terminal, and now we need to access our NAS through the SSH. So we use our user at and the IP address of our NAS. And now it asks us for our password. Okay, and now we are on our NAS. The first command is pretty simple, it's ID. And we all we need is this UID and GID to be copied to that code. So let's switch. So the UID is 1027 and the GID is 100. Now the time zone, I already know that it's Europe slash Berlin for me, but I guess yours is different. So you need to go to the Wikipedia, to this link, it will be of course in the description, and check this TZ database name, and you need one of these. Now the password, I'll put the most secure password in the world, don't tell anyone. The proxy domain. So if you're already familiar with the NAS and you have a domain for your NAS that you can access from the internet, you can put it here and you can even do a extra domain. So for example, it's like alexsynology.me and you can make a codeserver.alex.synology.me. If you don't have a proxy domain, we can just remove this parameter, no problem. But if you're interested in this topic, I will add another link in the description where it will tell you how to install a certificate, how to access your NAS through the internet. It's pretty useful. And you can check the rest of the website. They have quite a lot of nice advice if you have a NAS from Synology. But okay, let's switch back to our code. The only thing left is the location. So let's switch to our NAS, go to the file station and check the location of our code server folder and we will put it exactly here. Okay, so the code is ready. Now we need to switch back to the terminal and run it. So this is a common error that you may have and it's nice that we've bumped into it, so I will tell you how to bypass it. So it seems that we don't have enough permission for our docker.sock, so let's check. What are the permissions now? It's 660, okay. So let's change those. Fine, we can change, uh, we can check once again. Now it's 666, everything looks good. Okay, let's copy the code once again and post it here. Okay, it's unable to find the image locally, of course, because we don't have that image yet. And now it tries to pull it from the internet. Okay, and once it's done, we need to clean the mess that we've created. So we need to go and change the permissions to the folder as it used to be. Okay, okay, let's check that it's fine. Yep. And now we switch back to the Synology NAS and go to the control panel and switch off the SSH service if we don't need it anymore. All right, if we open the Docker container, which we have here, and switch to the containers, 
we'll see that our code server is nicely running over there. Now let's open it and check the local port. We will need it to access the code server. Okay, now we need the IP address of our cloud and this local port. Let's put it here and it will ask us for the password that we've set there. So don't tell anyone. And we are in the Visual Studio Code on our NAS. But we don't want to have it on our Mac in the Safari. We need it on our iPad. Let's go and switch our self-hosted server. We have the previous one. So let's delete it and type in our IP address of the NAS, semicolon, and the port, which was 8377. And if we have the password, which we do, don't forget to put it into this field so that the serve editor could safely connect to our code server. Okay, let's click save. And now in a matter of seconds, we should get our Visual Studio code yeah, with the same message as we had it here. And here we are, we have a Visual Studio code running on a Synology NAS and we can access to it through our iPad. So, this is my experience of using the Visual Studio Code with the iPad and honestly, it still doesn't match my expectations because I have quite different needs. I do Android apps and Visual Studio Code cannot do that. But I really hope that it matched your needs and let me know down in the comments which of the solutions would you go with. Or maybe you'll be still waiting for the Microsoft to release the Visual Studio native app. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope it was helpful. It's been Alex and see you at the Geek's Table. Bye-bye.